We said, is Jerry <laughs> is he too fucking good? <laughs> Did you get fucking attacked? <laughs> Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando, that's Corey, and today we're doing 1987's Three O'Clock High. If you would like to follow me or Corey on Twitter, you could follow me at Junior D's, you could follow Corey at Idle Poncho. Follow us, it's a hoot and things. Uh, but let's yeah. get into the, <laughs> it's okay. Hey, I it's, it's listen, 50-50. if you like random thoughts and some sports, and then some movie stuff like yeah absolutely follow us but yeah, that's where i that's where i go to when i can't get the poison out <laughs> obviously me too because my 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 musings on on twitter are just sometimes so very random so yeah yeah and, uh, i'm getting followed a lot recently by a lot of only fans <laughs> models which i know you're bots but at the same time you picked the wrong guy because i ain't paying for shit oh i think uh, they're trying you know to get at I mean? me because i started mine it was like our oh. you know i'm at armando fart box on there so oh, you're cool. that armando yes that's me that's me <laughs> so with that said let's get into the cast of three o'clock high easily the weirdest intro to any show we've done yes so this film stars Casey Semesco as Jerry Mitchell, Richard Tyson, my guy, as Buddy Ravel, Anne Ryan as Franny Perrins, Stacy Glick as Bree Mitchell, Jonathan Wise as Vincent Costello, and Jeffrey Tambor as Mr. Rice. Couple things. One, uh, uh, Buddy in this movie, yes. I didn't realize was the bad guy from Kindergarten Cop. Yes, that's why I Amazing. this is this is this was and is to this day. I this film holds a special place in my heart. Mm -hmm. Um one because Richard Tyson is in this and yes. as Buddy and I, if it's like even to this day, it's like we need a bad guy. What's Richard doing? Give him a call. Hey Dick, can you play in this role cuz it's it's a bad guy. You know, you don't have to have a ponytail, but you know, if you do we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna kill you. No, for we're it. not gonna be mad at him. <laughs> so no. But I love him in this movie. Mm -hmm. Um and I actually pulled a different um I got a different feeling from it watching it this time around because I haven't watched this in forever. Oh no, it's been a minute. I you know, in my head, I'm like, oh, you know, Jerry Mitchell's this nerd who works at works in the school bookstore and then you know, he's got to do this story and he gets bullied by, you know, Buddy here and it's, we're going to fight at three. And then the rest of the movie is him trying to get out of it, mm -hmm. which that's only half the story. Like, we'll get it here probably in the middle towards the end. But my guy, Jerry, this movie is set up that he's having the worst day of his life. I would say the opposite. This is one of the best days of this dude's life, period. End of story. Well, it, it definitely turns out to be that way, for sure. Um, <clears throat> and I got to be honest with you, this movie, rocky start. Because I was like you. One, Jerry's little supposed bit. to be a little bit of a geek, mm -hmm. right? Yet the beginning gives him this kind of Ferris Bueller kind of vibe. Little, little bit. You know what I mean? Like he's... Yeah. he's I don't know a nerd whose fucking clothes were just dirty all over the place. And it's like, oh, pop tart and t-shirt in the microwave and then getting yeah. dressed. And it opens, at, you know, we see Jerry who's late for school. You know, he looks like the nerd. But again, you get that Ferris Bueller kind of vibe as he's getting ready to go to school and work the bookstore. But one thing about this opening, A, the music was very 80s. But man, have you noticed that every teenage kid's room in an 80s film? Like, and this is kind of what gave him the, the Ferris Bueller vibe. Mm -hmm. They have the coolest bedrooms of all time in these films. Like, oh, yeah. I remember watching these films back in the 80s and going, my room is a piece of shit. Look at these kids. It could be messy, but they had like cool, like leg lamp things on the, on the wall and like cool posters and 
just rando things that you're like, where did you find this? Because that's awesome. And I was yeah. always envious of their rooms. Yeah, no, they have the best rooms and they also have the worst siblings. Uh, because She's, she starts out bad. I thought you were dead. Aren't you supposed to open up the student store at seven? But she's still bad because she's always up in everybody's shit. Like again, <laughs> yes. just dude, these these brothers and sisters, the little brother or sister in these eighties movies are so bad. Yeah, and they're so annoying. Whether or not they are your foil and constantly trying to screw you over, like uh, uh, Patrick Dempsey's little brother in Can't Buy Me Love. Yes, or if they're like the little girl in this movie who's like, ah, you're a nerd. But also every time I'm not speaking, my job is to look at you with my mouth open because you are so awesome. Watch the opening scene when they're driving to school. The sister is just looking at him in the background like, and she just well, holds that look. And it's like, dude, I was the youngest of all of my siblings. And I never once looked at those motherfuckers <laughs> like that. I love him to death, but yeah, come on, no, man. I, no, you ain't Jesus, exactly, exactly, and just this whole opening from him being late for school, yada yada, picking up Franny, his like friend slash girlfriend, whatever she is, like they're not dating, but she's she's like ah, oh, I'm in touch with the spirit world and things. Um, but yeah, she's all a the way freaky, freaky chick. Yeah, and at first it's really annoying. Yes. Because, you know, like, even the whole, like, I'm going to talk to my spirit advisor and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And you're just like, ugh. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you just like that. You're so extra. The only thing you could do is just go, ugh. <laughs> like, that's yes. just like the fucking taste I had in my mouth. Yeah. Every no, time she... she was on camera, right up until the time they have sex. And then it's like, oh, you would be fucking crazy as shit in bed. <laughs> And it might be worth just going through I this think, roller coaster of a life. Listen, we cut, co we covered this in blown away, man. Hi guys, don't do this. Don't do whatever the fuck Corey just said because those chicks will they, they crazy, and somehow she'll rope you into like killing her dad and then going on this weird like you're gonna be wearing jean jackets all the time and it's it's gonna be a whole thing. So just yeah, just stay away from that. Don't do that. So, Hi kids, Uncle Corey here. Don't listen to what this motherfucker said. You only get one life, live it. So we get to the school and we hear and see every stereotypical click in school talking about Buddy Ravel, the new psycho transfer that kills people and killed people at his last school and has a thing with people touching him for any reason. And he's got brass knuckles and stuff. One thing. Do you remember when brass knuckles were a thing? Like, I don't know if they were when you, but like, Harry's got brass knuckles. He must be fucking crazy. I re I do remember when those were like one of those, like, yeah, you may as well have a Bowie knife on your hip <laughs> kind of things. Like, wait, you, you got brass knuckles. I ain't fucking with you. You got brass knuckles and nunchucks. Yeah. God damn. <sighs> And this is, I think, maybe the best elementary school writing I've ever seen in my life for foreshadowing, because <laughs> they really, really want you to know two things in this. Buddy Ravel does not like to be touched, yep. and he has brass knuckles. Yes. And they that lean into all it. You need to, that is all you need to know about this man. The yes. rest of it, semantics. And then we get to see Buddy himself getting out of his shitty car with his shitty boots and dirty jeans and gorgeous head of hair. And everyone is scared to death of this dude as he walks down the hall because he's crazy, man. Vincent here, Jerry's buddy who works with him at the school newspaper, has an yeah. idea as they're walking down the hall to write a story about Buddy for the paper. And the I am editor breaking my best friend's neck. If he ever tried to do this to me, yes. let alone actually did it. Yes, because the editor agrees and gives the story to Jerry. 
And, you know, Jerry being the nerd guy, I'm nervous and I got to go to the bathroom to throw up or pee and I don't know which one's coming out. And while he's taking a piss, Jerry runs into Buddy and starts to nervously ask him about writing the story about him. And here's a don't do this. Listen, this is this has been a thing since the beginning of since urinals were invented. Okay, Um, don't use the urinal next to another. You're just too damn close. So you go. Buddy does the right thing. Skip a urinal. He's at the other urinal. Don't don't talk to another person while they're using the urinal. It's just it's just weird. No, like, certainly don't try and shake their fucking hand. Yeah, no, no, that's also weird. That's also weird. Yeah. So he breaks protocol here and does all of that. But Jerry then slaps Buddy on the arm here. And we know how Buddy doesn't like to be touched. So he roughs Jerry up and then challenges him to a fight in like the parking lot at three o'clock. Which, and can I just ask a question? Yes. It's probably the same question I have, but yes. He touches him on the arm. Now, in fairness, you fucking nasty, because one, you didn't wash your hands. And two, you don't just touch him on the arm. You wiped his <laughs> dick skin off <laughs> on his fucking shoulder on a leather jacket. Well, doesn't so, he slide his arm like or his hand down the dude's whole arm? He's like, oh. Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> then he proceeds to get his pants shoved under the or into the urinal and the toilet yeah. flushed on him so it looks like he pissed himself yes he then is thrown up against the wall or into yeah. the mirror right yes i think we're even at this point you were right i get it you're tough and don't touch me because i was an altar boy and blah, blah blah but also fucking simmer down you're right again grow the fuck up you're 34 years old and still in high school. <laughs> Get over getting fucking touched on the arm. Dude, Richard Tyson has looked like he's been 34 since he was eight. Oh. This dude had a five o'clock shadow at seven years old. Yeah, he was bored looking like that, and Jeffrey Tamborn was born with a mustache. After this whole incident in the bathroom, word travels fast. Everyone is asking Jerry about the fight. Now Jerry tries to find every way out of this fight. And first he talks to Buddy, which is the logical choice. Yeah. That doesn't work. Vincent then plants a knife in Buddy's locker yeah. and then sends a note to the principal to try to get him suspended. And Jerry here tells Vincent like, yo, that's not cool. He's going to know it was me. So you need to get the, the knife out of his, his locker and get that note back. And he can't remember Buddy's locker code, so they can't do that. So then Vincent's like, I'm going to go get the note from the principal. Uh, now, after you get the note from the principal, this plan is terrible. Now a crazy guy has a knife and the pri just, you know what? Let's just run with this one and let's see how this one plays out. But they don't. He goes and gets the, the note from the principal, and now Crazy Dude has a goddamn knife. Yeah, after this, two things. One, I would rather hang out with Vincent from Collateral <laughs> as my best friend than have this fucking yes. shit face Vincent be my best friend. Because yeah. this Vincent's actually going to get me killed. But it's true. My next plan. So I struck out talking to him. I struck mm -hmm. out trying to have my friend, friend, plant uh, a weapon on him third plan is i'm gonna take vincent and shove him as hard as i can into buddy and then turn and walk the other way because now buddy and vincent are each other's problems yes. and i can survive at least one more day yeah vincent is the worst human being i have seen since eric cartman Fucking bullshit. we then get franny here who we said is jerry's friend but who also wants to hook up with him. And she's talking to spirits and she's concerned about Jerry. And Jerry, after he talks to her, goes out to his car just to leave school. But he can't because Buddy disassembles his entire engine and sticks the knife from his locker in the steering wheel with a note that's like, yeah, we're fighting anyway and you can't run away and I'll this find you. This just turned into a fucking horror movie. 
It really did. Like, wait, you did what? Yeah. You disassembled my engine. <laughs> and you stuck a note and a knife. Th- now, the note and the knife thing, cool. I yeah. get that because technically, that's that's Vincent's bad, but by proxy, that's my bad. Yeah. Cool. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Don't fuck with my but dude, car. Like, this turns into you- like single white female real quick. Yeah, dude. <laughs> this is insane. You're right again. Here's the other ridiculous thing. So he gets approached by the overly aggressive school security guard here in the in the parking lot named the Duker. He chases him, pats him down, finds the knife, and he takes him to the dean of abusing students. This broke ass Telly Savalas looking motherfucker yeah. who lets Jerry go with a stern "I'm gonna be watching you" kind of. And lecture. if you pay it, if you were paying any sort of attention to it, he has Nazi war crimes books on his desk. I'm pretty sure the art of the deal was in there too somewhere. I just didn't see it. <laughs> but, but dude, like dude. one. Every every male authority figure in this movie is either shaved head, yeah, and looks like fucking Kurt Angle, like circa two thousand four, <laughs> or for whatever reason, are balding. Yes, there's and, there's just a plethora of smooth dicks walking around this fucking school. <laughs> there's no escape from the Duker. So hey, Duker. I hate to tell you this, but back in the eighties, I'm pretty sure that name was still slang for shit. So you're walking around school calling yourself poop. He called the shit poop. (laughs) After this, we have more people coming up to Jerry talking about the fight, including the reject from Breaking 2 Electric Boogaloo, who tells Jerry that he's got people taking bets on the fight now. Jerry then comes up with an idea. So during a fire drill that Vincent starts for him, where he pulls the, the alarm, He finds Craig, the big football player who he knows, and by the way, who also looks like he's 30 fucking five years old, and asks him to beat up Buddy. Craig agrees and asks for $450 to do it, which, just by coincidence, is the exact amount that the school bookstore has in its register. So, Thank God he didn't have to enter a competition for a fifty thousand dollar prize. That's exactly <laughs> what Craig would have asked for too. Exactly. So Jerry then breaks into the register in the bookstore, destroys the entire bookstore in the process because he's a moron. And by the way, during this 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 whole scene of him getting the money, and then afterwards goes to give Craig, you know, the four hundred fifty dollars mm-hmm. to beat Buddy up. I got to don't do that. Hi, high school people that are about to get your ass kicked and are going to pay somebody off to beat up the bully that's going to beat you up, whatever. Um, Don't do what Jerry does here and don't pay. And this this applies to this situation and life. Okay, don't pay before the work's done. You want to do half up front and half at the end when the when the job's taken care of. That's how. You're supposed to pay for these things. But if you can get away with zero up front, here's, I'll show you the 450, you know, pull a Joe yeah, Pesci. Yeah. Here's the, <laughs> here's the Joe, here's the, the two fit or the 450. And then when it's done, I'll pay you because the next scene comes up and Craig confronts Buddy in the library and Buddy breaks Craig's finger and knocks him the fuck out. By yep. breaking his face to pieces. Hi, kids. Uncle Corey here. If you find yourself where you are going to be the aggressor in a fight, yes, start fucking fighting. Or Immediately. Go fuck off. Yes. They're, the talky talky movie thing is just mm. for movies. Yes. If you're good and ready to fight somebody and they piss you off so much that you want to hit them in the fucking face, just do either it. Start going to work. Or sit down and have another beer. Hell yes. After this whole scene, Jerry's sister then comes up with a plan for Jerry to get detention so he won't be able to fight, which is also another good plan. Oh, these are viable options. And I will fully admit, everything he is doing to get out of this fight, I have done. 
Save, save for paying somebody off and trying to fuck my teacher. Yeah. Which, I don't. Did you ever have a teacher like that? <sighs> not that. Not not this attractive. I I did. <laughs> I did. Not. I did. God I damn it, Miss Malcor, chemistry, not- <laughs> Ironwood High School. I love you and I miss you. I still hold you right here in my heart. Um, if Cuban only that- I had the balls of Jerry. Yeah, this, yeah, dude, no shit. His, this scene, his, his way of getting a detention, yeah, is the coolest fucking way somebody <laughs> has gone about getting detention I yes. have ever seen in my yes. life. Because he goes to his next class after he talks to his sister, and he's got to give a book report. So he basically does his best to Andrew Dice Clay impression. And gives a book report about like Debbie does Dallas or some bullshit. Andrew Dice Clay implies that he's calling her a bitch and a cunt. No, I'm just talking about. And Stone Cold seduces his (laughs) English teacher. Yes. I'm just talking about some of the, some of the mannerisms and he's just got like that. Uh, Yeah. Hey, and then I read the third chapter and I was like, gonna come in my pants. But it turns his teacher on and he goes at the end of it, goes up and they're like two inches apart. And then he kisses his teacher and then passes out. By the way, if that was me, that would have been the same reaction. Oh, like <laughs> if I kissed Miss Malcor, I would have fucking jizzed in my pants and passed right the fuck out. Now, he passed out because he's hypoglycemic and didn't have yeah. lunch that day. But no. yeah, didn't matter. I would have passed out because I'm an excitable boy. After he passes out, he wakes up to large Marge in the nurse's office who said his teacher would like him to call her at home for extra credit and that dick. And this is where Armando says at the beginning of the show, this has just turned into the best day ever. Ever. Because he also gets invited to the party by the hot girl that he's infatuated with. Yeah. and. Right after that, he gets invited by Franny into the school bookstore to bang. My guy is like three for three right now. Here's a bit of advice for you, Jerry. Take the L and go three and one, and you've had a fantastic day. Yeah, this is this is definitely where Jerry and I start to relate because <laughs> and not because I was crushing ass, because no, that never happened, but more so because like he is so he found a way to be interesting yes where he was just vanilla he had no place he was just a kid working at the student school nobody fucking knew his name blah 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 blah. he was just a guy he hung out with his younger sister and the best friend that's trying to stab him in the back constantly and the yeah. weirdo girl from school that's like into Dion all Warwick. That. Yeah, into <laughs> all the paranormal way of communicating and shit. Fran, Franny was like, Call me now for your free tarot reading. All of these weird ways you've tried to get out of this has only made you cooler in everybody else's eyes because nobody else is seeing that you're just a pussy. Yeah. They're just like, Yo, he tried to fight, he's gonna fight Buddy Ravel after school. And all he's doing is coming out of his shell, and he looks like fucking James Dean doing it. It's going somewhere. I'm with you. <clears throat> I'm taking the L right here. That's I'm it. Get, listen, all of take the that ass whooping. That's take coming that at ass me, whooping. And yep. I'm having a great time. I'm letting Freaky Franny show me whatever they taught her in her <laughs> cult. <laughs> and then I'm moving on to my teacher and letting her get me more experienced. And then I'm moving on to the fucking Whisperer girl, and she can experience my gift at that point like Hello, i have this jerry can i have a pen i'm having a party tomorrow night and i was wondering if you'd like to come and i didn't re i didn't know like did she have a british accent she had some sort I of did. accent i don't know what it was because they're in like colorado or something yeah guess what chief i'm 43 i couldn't fucking hear because she was whispering <laughs> the whole time yes i'd like a big pen please may i have a pen please <laughs> hey jerry you want to come to a party in my house? After this, Jerry and Buddy get sent to the principal's office because Buddy was cheating off of Jerry on a math test. And then we find out here 
that Buddy is like goodwill hunting and because of like math and apples and things. I didn't get that. Fair. I mean, look, anybody that can do those math problems, to me, they are goodwill hunting because I don't know what the <laughs> fuck is happening on that board. No, I'm good with I, high school math. You made that you made that division sign look weird. Why does it have like a cardiogram check in it? Is, is that not the square root symbol? Yes, it is. I just saw them put that shit on the chalkboard and I'm like, yo, I can't answer that. Yeah, now, I was like, no. Let alone then. I looked at it and went, cool math problem, bro. <laughs> 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 they leave the principal's office. Yes. And Jerry tries one more time, one more attempt to call off the fight. So he offers Buddy $350 to call off the fight. Because he got three fifty back from Craig for not being able to to beat Buddy up. So yeah, and this is my favorite part of the movie. Yes, when Buddy takes the money and just lays into him. Yo, this I, is because this look, is harsh. I don't, I don't know if you've ever been in a bully fight situation where it's just like, yeah, this guy's gonna fucking kill me. Yeah, I've been in plenty of but, those. The first time that happened to me, I ran away. I, I fucking looked like goddamn Usain Bolt out there. You couldn't have caught me if you tried. But I remember when I got home and like, I was like, yeah, I'm safe. That sinking feeling like, oh, I don't like being a coward. That just doesn't feel good. You know what yeah, I mean? It like, felt pretty good point, to me because I ran away. <laughs> I ran away and went and played Tecmo Bowl. And I was, <laughs> I was super happy and thrilled with myself. That is not how it went for me. I just was like, ugh. So I re- like I love this scene here because that's how it felt running away from all of those problems. And yeah. at some point, you just got to be like, you know what? Fuck it. No, you got you got like, you got to take. Really, you, that's just what it is. Sometimes you just got to take the ass whooping. That's and that's you, just you, look. More often than not, it's almost like when how we've talked about like when your girl cheats on you and your mind it's so bad. Yeah. That it doesn't even matter what she did. It could have been a three yeah. second pump and dump and it wouldn't matter. Yeah. Because in your mind, she's like fucking Sasha Gray and they're everywhere. So <laughs> <laughs> it, that's kind of what it's like when you're getting bullied, that fear of getting hit. Yeah. But once you get that first punch in the face because you've built it up so bad in your mind, you're kind of like, that's it. Yeah. Like that's well, what I was and, fucking afraid of this whole time, and then he yeah. just then it's like, all right, we're fucking throwing down. Well, then Jerry here walks away, and he's like relieved at first. He pulls a Corey. He's relieved at first that the fight's called off. They're not going to fight, and then he starts thinking about it. Jerry goes back to Buddy, like after thinking about it a little bit, and says, yep. "I'm stupid, but I ain't no pussy." And then the fight's back on. Three o'clock hits, and the whole school is there. There are more people for this fight than for the Jake Paul fight. Fucking Thanos showed up to watch this fight. It was breaking Dude, off, it was, bro. Okay, I don't know if if when you grew up in your, you know, dusty trash bag of Arizona or wherever you grew up, right? But in school, if there was a fight in the parking lot, which there wasn't many for me growing up, like that wasn't a thing. You typically waited till Everybody was home. Like you went off site for fights. Yeah, most fights but, happened after we got off the bus or like yes. just in the middle of school. Yes. If you couldn't fucking wait. But if, even if you're fighting at said school and it's like three o'clock, we're fighting, bro. You might get like ten people to show up, maybe twenty, if you know they got money on it, mm-hmm. like they do at this school. But everybody else like, is like, yeah, fucking cool, man. I got shit to do. Like I'm out. Like there must be 500 kids that go to the school and they were all there, including the teachers, news crews. <laughs> there were thousands of kids there. But the best is the principal, like this little series of scenes right before the fight starts, it. the principal shows up. He tries to break it up. He gets knocked out. The duker also gets knocked the fuck out. And then cheap ass Telly Savalas says screw that and he slinks away like jack palance and tango and cash back into the crowd and he's like i'll see you later dude when he but, slunk away all i could think about was your uh homer simpson in the bush comment from the tango <laughs> and cash episode i was fucking rolling 
<laughs> That's literally what he does. He's just like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and slide out of, out of frame here. Yeah, and hopefully he's getting a, getting a new job because he can never go back to that school. Yeah, he can get a job as like the fucking Hitler youth counselor at their local fucking camp. Jerry here is getting his ass kicked after all this, right? Mm-hmm. But also, he's kind of holding his own. Like, he's getting a cup, a hit in here and there, mostly and getting his ass kicked. Mm-hmm. But he's kind of keeping pace a little bit. And I, I love that scene, too, when he does it. He connects on his first punch, which, first of all, the punch he throws, that's technical as shit. <laughs> as fast as his hand. Like, he's a little yeah. Jerry fast hands. You know what I mean? He just pop up. The look on his face when he does connect and he kind of has that like look like of shock where he just looks at his fist like, holy shit, I yeah. just hit a dude. I love that scene because that's also yeah. what it feels like the first time you fight back and you do connect with somebody and you're just like, oh, I can do that too. Yeah. Awesome. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, yeah. I'm Iron Man now. That's what that <laughs> feeling is the first time you punch somebody. So he, he kind of holds his own for a little bit here until he gets knocked out by Buddy. And his Tim Tebow-like wind-up punch. Dude, there were kids in the next high school over down the street that saw that punch coming. Yeah. Like, he took 16 steps before he actually swung. And it was the shit was just cocked back like this the entire time. Um, hey, Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Might want to duck that one. Just, just, just give it a little, <laughs> give it a little slide, bro. <laughs> but he, I think thought he was going to button hook him. I I, I, button hooked me. <laughs> After knocking Jerry out, Buddy then here puts on his brass knuckles to, I don't know, kill Jerry, apparently. Listen, I get it. I know you don't like to be touched because you're Buddy Ravel and you like brass knuckles, but. The dude's 110 pounds, sopping wet, yeah. and you just put him on his ass. And he ain't getting up, brother. No, but he's done. My guy's like, nah, got to put on them brass knuckles. To, for yeah. what? To knock out all his teeth and now you go to prison? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> like that part either because they're starting to, midway through the movie, they're starting to make it seem like Buddy's just a little more misunderstood. Yeah, it, it's like Mike and Myers went to high school. Exactly. And now all of a sudden, like, now he's ripping out, like, he had no respect for Jerry because Jerry paid him off yes. to not fight him. And yep. he called him the biggest pussy in the world. So therefore, I would think that Buddy now has some sort of respect for Jerry because at least Jerry stood up to him and even landed a couple punches and made the fight a little harder than it was supposed to be. Yes. But now I've won. The kid fought back. He fought Valiant. Why am I doing this? Yeah. It's over. You know, you're turning yeah, back into that kind of psycho that you set up at the beginning, yeah. which was all just supposed to be hyperbolic. He's yeah. just a guy. Exactly. You and know what I mean? So he goes to put the brass knuckles on, and then he gets jumped by Vincent. He makes pretty quick work of Vincent, but the brass knuckles fall to the floor. Jerry's sister, Bree, picks up the brass knuckles, gives them to Jerry, and Jerry wins the fight by dotting buddy in the forehead with these brass knuckles and giving him cte immediately we got to do this hi kids uncle Corey here if you ever punch somebody with brass knuckles you're probably going to break your hand yes i highly highly recommend you do not do that yes you're probably agreed. going to break your hand anyway because throwing a punch is not like a movie punch like you boop. Yeah. You got to know how to throw a fucking punch or you're going to hurt your shit. You want to know why my pinky is sticking out like that? Because somebody didn't know how to throw a fucking punch. I was going to be so yours yours goes out. Mine goes in. So uh, if if you've watched this show for for any length of time, you'll know I did about two months worth of shows with a cast. (laughs) So if you throw a punch, even a even a, a little bit wrong. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a that's a broken fist is what that yeah. is. So uh, one, don't go around willy nilly punching things. But two, yeah. if you do, yeah. learn how to punch. And three, don't use brass knuckles because one, you don't fucking need them, and if you do, you're a fucking bitch. And yes. two, they're gonna break your goddamn hands. The next day, as everyone finds out about the bookstore money, so they buy single sheets of loose leaf paper for a dollar, and then Buddy shows up and gives Jerry the three hundred fifty dollars that. 
Jerry gave him the day before. So yay, they saved the bookstore money, whatever. But, aha, the movie's not over yet, folks. Because Mm. Franny gets there. She's all up on Jerry. The hot, cool chick gets there and she whispers some sweet nothings into his high school girls. Come on, bring it to me. And then the teacher, the English teacher shows up, kisses him, and he does his best Ice Cube impression. I can't believe today was a good day. Moral of the story is, take that L. When you're having the day this dude's having, take that one L. You gotta you gotta step back and look at the whole day. You could take the one L and you might not be able to go to school for a couple of days or work or whatever. But dude, just take that ass whooping because outside of that, you were having a pretty dope day. Yeah, and I mean, look, um, I think a couple lessons are learned here. Uh, one. Just stand up for yourself and have some self-respect because you never know what the fuck is going to happen. Yep. You don't have to belittle yourself to try and fucking wiggle out of shit. Just let, let events unfold and see where you end up because sometimes it ends up pretty good. Yeah. Uh, uh, and two, if you have the opportunity and you have no more fucks to give, definitely try and kiss your hot-ass teacher. I'm going to go ahead and say, don't take, Corey, <laughs> don't take Corey's <laughs> advice on this one. Because, listen, take it from somebody who lives in Florida. That shit's, that shit's on the news all the time. That, that story never ends up good. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we're going to get a couple comments about the good old 80s where you could fuck your teachers. But, listen, it's not cool. It really isn't. No, no. This, though, this, though it was... Such a relatable movie for me that it absolutely hundred percent test of time. 100%. And I know, look, we've bemoaned the teachers and students and all the different shit before. It still is gross, but this made me feel like such a high school kid again, where I could relate to Jerry, and this was my fantasy, best day utopia ever that could have happened to me in high school. Needless to say, it never did, but this is like that this, one perfect day that I wish I could have had in high school because all your, the players existed. Everybody was there. This was like Corey's masturbatory fantasy when he was in high school. I didn't even have to touch myself now. <laughs> it just happened. You were right. There were so many things that were really 80s about this movie, but... With that being said, like the music was 80s, the looks were 80s, oh. like all that stuff. Even even the some of the tropes were very 80s. Um, but man, I've never gotten through a movie and was like, oh my God, this was tropey as shit, very 80s. And hmm. then gotten out the back end when the credits are rolling and going, man, this movie still holds up though. Like oh. everything about this movie still holds up. <clears throat> the The... Only movies I typically tolerate campiness like this for are horror movies. Yeah. Because it is just such a part of that genre that you yeah. just, that's what it's supposed to be. But this was amazing in all of its campiness. It fell it, or flew right into the face of all of the tropes and cliches of high school. Yes. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't particularly rapey like a lot of the other high school 80 movies we've watched. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the, the females were more of the aggressor sexually than the male, than the, all of them were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, just, it really is outside of the visuals. It is a very timeless kind of movie that you absolutely holds up today. And it's, it's, it's a really good movie. And if you really do want to get a glimpse into what my perfect day would have been in high school. (laughs) Yo, this is fucking it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Except for, but except for they cut out the hard R sex scene that would have happened between me and the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's all I got for this. Do you have anything else? No, I got a little couple things to do now. You're goddamn right. But that said, for Corey, I'm Armando. This I got is with my left hand. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> This is Kiss the Reviews, and this was 1987's 3 O'Clock High.